write it, that will be betrayer among my workers. But greater is he that is in me. God has shown me the name and the step and everything. Pray that Lord Jesus should keep strengthening them for the task ahead. Prayer. Very recently, I got back and I saw that by the other woman in a dark, in a dark place with one strange woman was just opening the door. And by the other woman was standing there with this one woman. And I phoned the man of God and said, I don't know what's going on. I saw it by the other woman with this woman in a very dark place. And the second time, I saw him in the gallery with the same woman. So I was very surprised. Why do you think I want to come down now? Because you notice the relationship with her, with the lady over there, is no more existing the same way here. Later, when his expectations of marriage did not work out the way he had planned, he seemed to realize the error of his ways in his abuse of the position entrusted him for selfish motives. He came back begging for forgiveness. Please, uh, my brothers and sisters, I'm here this morning to apologize for my unruly attitude. The embarrassment I've caused the whole disciples. I'm here to apologize. I have learned my lesson. I've learned a lot of lessons. My naughtiness, pride, arrogance, especially to the man of God. I've offended many disciples, not many, everybody, in different ways. But I have come this morning to say, please, I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, we cannot outgrow the need for our mentor. I've learned my lesson. Despite the offense, Agoma was forgiven and accepted back into the synagogue Church of All Nations. However, his deception was soon forced to reveal itself again, which led to his final desertion of the ministry. Upon leaving, he began to circulate outrageous lies. Luke 6 verse 45 A good man brings good things out of the good, stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The miracles he did, the whole thing is stage managed and faked. It's faked. I supervise everything for years. I know everything that happens. Come out if you're suffering from cancer of any part of the body. We have the emergency section. Here is the emergency section of the synagogue, Church of All Nations. They have been trained by medical doctors. Any cancerous situation, they send them away. Then, people that had ordinary wounds that can heal, will bring them in to present as cancer. Listen carefully on how Mr. Paul said that any persons with cancerous situations, they would send them away. And people that had ordinary wounds, that can heal, they would be brought in. To contradict Mr. Paul's fallacies, here is a man who was brought to Synagogue Church of All Nations with cancer of the buttocks. His condition had deteriorated to an extent that maggots were eating his flesh away and flies could be seen hovering over the open wound. Can we say that this is an ordinary wound? Here we can see Mr. Paul, who was downplaying the extreme cases of cancer he used to witness, and not only witness, he would also partake in praying along with senior prophet TB Joshua. Any cancerous situation, they send him away. Then, People that had ordinary wounds that can heal, 
will bring them in to present as cancer. The miracles he did, the whole thing is stage managed and faked. It's faked. As you have listened carefully to Mr. Paul, he claims that every miracle that took place at the Synagogue Church of All Nations was stage managed and fake. But yet again, here is Mr. Paul. At the emergency section of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, praying along with Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. Instantly, look at what happens. Pass just bursted and started to ooze out of the man's leg. Can this be staged? As Mr. Paul claims, The so-called miracles. Miracles of the what we call miracle of crippled people. I bought four wheelchairs for TB Joshua in the church. What we call miracles of crippled healing, like that of Mr. Maxwell EJ, that wheelchair was bought by me. Maxwell EJ got drunk, and when he was stepping down from his uh, story building, he fell off and hit his waist. Upon hearing the blasphemous lies, that Mr. Paul was circulating, Mr. E.J. came forth to testify to the goodness of God in his life through senior prophet T.B. Joshua. Uh, my name is uh, Maxwell E.J. and this is my wife standing by my side. Uh, what brought me here uh, in 2000, the year 2000, January, I was polarized. I work with uh, UTC Engineering. So my company took me to UCH, pardon. From UCH, after spending, uh, sometimes they, they now discover that uh, my sickness is uh, not what they can handle. And I decided to, I should, they should take me to Ijabibu to a native doctor. And I said, no, then my, I cannot walk. My people provided me with a, a wheelchair. On the way to Ijabibu, I said, no. There's a church I used to watch uh, on television. It's not a church or foundation that they should take me there. So from there, from me, but they brought me to Lagos. With my wheelchair and the, the, my company vehicle that we used to come. And I went to Festac where my aunt lost it because she worshiped here. Then, through how I was able to see a man of God, I received my healing through the help of a man of God. My name is Joy EJ, Mrs. Joy EJ Maxwell, the man standing by my side. He's my husband. So someone said he bought a wheelchair for him. The, the wheelchair is not bought for him by any other person, by his colleague in the working place. So I'm here. I'm surprised to hear that one Mr. Agamemnon says is the one that provided him with the wheelchair. May God forgive Agamemnon for what he said, because since nine years now, I and my husband and my children, we are living to the glory of God. Pray. May God forgive him for all he has been said. May God forgive him. Here is Mr. Paul blatantly denying the miracles that would take place at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. But here is the same Mr. Paul years earlier sharing on what had brought him to the Synagogue Church of All Nations in the very first my place. My auntie, my uncle's wife, how God used my father, Prophet T.B. Joshua, to heal her of severe palpitation of the heart and high blood pressure. So she came back and told me, and told my uncle, I said, let us go. And since I came, I saw the truth, and I kept following him. You have just heard these two contradictory statements. 
a man who said it was the truth of the miracles that had brought him to the synagogue church of all nations, is now denying the very miracles which had convinced him in the first place. What am I seeing? What am I watching? These people with cancers and, and growths just being vulnerable and desperate. Miracles. Help my brother! Help my brother, man of God! The people I saw on the videos, they were real. Their ailments, their sicknesses, their suffering was evidentially real. And then there were these incredible documented healings. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. I saw a lady with breast cancer. And then a few days later, the wound had healed. And everyone is just in awe. I was like, what? How is, how is that possible? How is that happening? At one of the congregations of the Scoen branches, Mr. Paul can be seen proclaiming the good news of God Almighty from his 10 years of experience at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Please, what I'm saying is not I had. Oh, it's like, I'm telling you, I'm a witness. I am telling you what I've been seeing for the past 10 years. If he comes here, oh, you will know that. You will know that if you meet an anointed man, you are blessed. If he meet you, you are blessed. If you pass him, you are blessed. If he passes you, you are blessed. Me, as for me personally, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here. I'm going to share from that blessing. I'm not tired of blessing me. I still need more of blessing from him. So you can imagine if I say he's coming with a lot of blessings, with the host of heaven, with the angels of heaven to visit you, and I'm saying I want to partake from your own blessings. That means I know what I'm saying. I'm not just talking. I'm talking out of experience. Can this be the very same man who came to the Scoen because of the miracles he witnessed in his family and also testified of the miracles he saw for the past 10 years of his life? Now, he is denying that these miracles he used to witness ever existed. What should our response then be to such a man with dubious inconsistent fallacies and selfish ambitions. I'm here to apologize. I have learned my lesson. I've learned a lot of lessons. My naughtiness, pride, arrogance, especially to the man of God. To the candid, I've never seen any crippled person that was healed in Synagogue Church. Here is Bisola Johnson, one of the interviewees of the BBC documentary. Listen carefully as she shares on how she went to the Synagogue Church of All Nations. What brought you initially to this country and what God saved you from? God saved me from spirit of death. Because before every time I always think of death, I always dream of death. Even when I was walking, anytime I'm in, I'm in a position and I have a terrible dream, they always demote me or something always happens. I've tried seven times to get married. It doesn't work out. I've tried, I've even used money in buying people. It doesn't work out. This is a stark contradiction of her former tale that she had merely come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations after her family were recovering from a fire outbreak. Sometime 14 years ago, close to 14 years ago, I came to the synagogue church. Uh, at this time, my family just recovered from a fire outbreak in our home. 
And at that particular time, it's like we needed God and we needed help, actually. My father's friend introduced him to the synagogue church, uh, mainly because of my father's uh, malignant sickness. The second time Bisola said that she went to the synagogue church of all nations after her family was recovering from a fire outbreak and that her father was suffering from a malignancy sickness. What could be the reason why Bisola was creating such blatant lies? We hope as you are watching this would be the question going on at the back of your mind. What is the problem you have with your brain? I always have a terrible headache, which is called migraine. And any time it happens, I always misbehave. I don't care about what happens in my surroundings. I always behave irrationally. I don't care about what happens to me next. Tell us your, what normally happens to you, the experiences you have when this migraine comes. I always have terrible nightmares. So these nightmares always haunt me. I don't regard anybody. I just behave the way, any, the way my spirit dictates to me. Anything my spirit says, I will just do it. In another public confession, Bisola confessed on what this irrational behavior once caused her to do. Let us listen. She said her name is Bisola. She lives in Kanu, Nigeria. In her family, they worship Satan. Whenever she sleeps, a snake will bite her on her hands, and she will lose all of the money that she has. Because of that frustration, she had to go and get married. For more than two years they were married, and they were always fighting. It's like some invisible people were living in the house with them. Then one day, her husband said that he was no longer interested in the marriage. So she drank poison, and her husband rushed her to the hospital. After two weeks, she poured kerosene and petrol on the house and set it on fire, burning over three million naira worth of property. These are the wounds she suffered from the fire. The man of God asked, you burnt the whole house? She answered, yes, the whole house burnt, including all of the property inside? Yes, she said, everything including my property and his property. The man of God asked, is your husband the owner of the house? She said that they rented it, that it is a two-bedroom flat. The man of God asked, You mean you burnt the whole house? Yes, she said, even the roof fell down. Why didn't you burn in the fire? The man of God asked. She said that she did not know, that it was God that saved her, because she made sure she drank a full bottle of alcohol so that she would be too drunk to walk out of the house. Later, she found herself in the hospital. She explained to the police that she was the one that burnt the house down because she wanted to die. She didn't know the kind of evil spirit that was disturbing her. 
They detained her, and her husband spent over 200,000 naira to bail her out. If not, they said that she was supposed to spend 17 years in prison. Recall the statement made earlier by Bisola that she had went to the synagogue church of all nations after her family was recovering from a fire outbreak, whereas she was the one who burned the house where she had lived with her husband. <laughs> During her stay at the Synagogue Church of All Nations, there were occasions where Bisola's rebellious attitude and dishonest conduct had led her to walk out of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, only to come back some time later pleading for forgiveness. Bisola. I've acted as an enemy of God rather than a friend. And today I am coming back as a prodigal daughter so that God will forgive me, so that the man of God will forgive me and the church synagogue will forgive me. Instead of humility, I've been very proudful. I've been aggressive. I've been rebellious. When I left the synagogue church, nobody asked me to leave. I'm asking God to forgive me. This is yet another time where Bisola came back to the synagogue church of all nations after committing several mischievous atrocities. I'm stubborn, I'm proud. I lie. I do all kinds of things. Please help me. That's me speaking. Amongst being stubborn and proud, Bisola admits that she also lies. In her latest interview, she admitted that this is her. People find it difficult to believe you. Please help me, sir. I've been laid flat on the floor. My skirt was lifted up and I was just naked. He hit me with that horse whip. He will actually lie down on the floor. He will use it. Bisola and Mr. Paul continued to overstate on how Bisola was laid on the floor and beaten mercilessly. His mercy. You are at his mercy. But what really happened? during that time. So can we give you the last chance? Yes, sir. So this will be the last chance. I'll never come to this place in this form again. Do it for us. In Jesus' name. So we wish you good love. We pray for you. We tell you we pray that we believe where the Holy Spirit will affect your ways. What you have just said now, the piteous cries for help seem almost genuine, but having been granted a last chance by the man of God, and having sworn in the presence of the man of God and all the evangelists and workers of the Synagogue Church of All Nations, that she had changed and would never again return to them in this form, Bissela's appalling acts and contemptible character only seemed to get worse showing no sign of remorse or repentance after the pardon had been granted. It was this behavior that finally compelled Bissela to leave the Synagogue Church of All Nations once and for all. I always have a terrible headache, which is called migraine. And anytime it happens, I always misbehave. I don't care about what happens in my surroundings. I don't regard anybody. I just behave the way, any, the way my spirit dictates to me. So coming from a Muslim background, our experience and what we saw was really bizarre, you know, where somehow, you know, it was really strange. But we thought, well, we are crossing over to a new <laughs> religion. To show how lying was second nature to Bisola, she said that she was from a Muslim background 
And in another instance, she said that her family worships Satan. Her name is Bisola. She lives in Kanu, Nigeria. In her family, they worship Satan. I'm not a Muslim, but I have to put on a job in order to cover my identity. TB Joshua continues sending different people to threaten my life. Here she is, once again, <laughs> retracting being a Muslim. To expose how perpetrators would go on such great length to carry out their act of wickedness, let us listen to one of those who had gone to the extreme end in trying to propagate lies against Prophet T.B. Joshua by employing a wide variety of media. My name is Shegom. I'm a freelance writer. I do reside at Ikotun, Lagos here. Uh, the first man that came out here to, you know, make this confession is a very good friend of mine. We do carry out a lot of mission, exercise, and advoc to men of God, churches, and crusade centers alike. As a matter of fact, uh, we had this kind of write-up. It's all about blackmailing you and blasphemy against the ministry, your personality, and things like that. We wrote it and we said that you are the manifestation of the Antichrist. Which cult are you belong to? Black Asa, the manifestation of the Antichrist by Shegon. This is a short Bible reference. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth's surface in the sight of men and deceive them with numerous miracles. Revelation 13, verse 13 to 14. On this short Bible reference from the, on this short note from the Bible, I started off my note of warning to Christians and believers alike that we should all beware because the real Antichrist has come to stay in our midst. Lagosians, it's high time we stop being gullible to miracle centers, crusades, and churches. Is a part. This is another write-up. In a bit of you know, reading out this publicity and making it to known, known to the public. We went as far as approaching them at AIT. In order to, because we have the power, there's no force we cannot penetrate into and you always do our bid. We get ourselves involved in homosexuality, we rape girls, we, you know, carry out a lot of bad things and things like that. In the process of this, our leader, you know, the two of us had an accident then. He died, but I don't know why God, you know, spared me. We even went as far as making his life on here. That's, there's a letter there that is the managing director, that communication, PMD 100, AIT Drive, Alagba, Lagos. This content, you know, will elaborate more on what we have at the back. We just tweeted that uh, it's more or less of uh, this kind of youth entertainment you know, talk chat show that we just really want to, you know, get some youth involved. But what we had at the back of our mind then is to make sure that we publish this very article in my hand. And in the process of it, we even went as far as going to banks. You can see this, a seal of Weimar Bank, you know, acknowledging our letter and some other. We even went as far as going about getting loans in order to carry out, you know, this project in our hands. So As you have heard, this man used his occultic power to penetrate the ranks of television and publication media houses to spread his blasphemous allegations concerning the happenings at the Synagogue Church of All Nations. His confession further emphasizes the evil world in which we live and the need to be watchful and prayerful at all times. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41, Watch and pray, that you may not fall into temptation. In a world that cares less, we should care more. Today, we live in the day and age where 
content, that is what you see on the screen of social media, what is written, what has been said, appearing before our eyes becomes the first important day. We live in that age today. That's why I'm here to advise Christian. I'm a Christian who is saved and washed with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus. Every Christian must compare men's words, men's content, men's writing with God's revelation. You need to compare and make sure that you are not deceived by false information.